Hey everybody, welcome to Always Bored, Never Boring. Recently, I've started painting the miniatures for Advanced Hero Quest, and I have come up with a consistent way of painting all the bases. To save from having to repeat that process in every video I do, I thought I would do a separate standalone video just going through the process in more detail. The technique I'm using is actually a colour variant of the technique I used on my Hero Quest bases. I'll put a link to that video in the description below. And it's also the same technique I'm using for my Dungeon Quest miniatures, all of which will also get used in Advanced Hero Quest anyway, so it makes sense to keep it all consistent. The idea is to create a sort of broken flagstone effect using a colour palette that ties in with the art on the original Advanced Hero Quest boards. To start with, I've just prepared this base by using green stuff to fill the little recess on the top from the moulding process, and then I've base coated it with Abaddon Black. I use black for the base coat because it gives a striking contrast to the flagstones I'm going to paint, but you could also use a dark brown like Dryad Bark, which will be a slightly more realistic finish. And this base coat doesn't have to be smooth, in fact a little texture is no bad thing. You can use the paint straight from the pot, just make sure the coverage is good. Once that base coat is dry, we can start marking out our flagstones. To do this, I'm thinning down some Steel Legion Drab, and there's two ways to approach this. You can mark out some haphazard shapes, or if you want to, you can mark out some rectangular and square flagstones. Whichever approach you go for, you don't want the shapes to be perfect. They need to look roughly hewn. Having cracks and little bits broken off looks really good. And at the moment, we aren't worried about getting really good coverage. We just want to get our shapes sketched out. You can make the lines between the flags as thick or as thin as you like, depending on what kind of look you want. You can also continue the pattern down onto the sides of the bases, which is what I do. Once you have all of those shapes blocked in, we can go back with a second coat of Steel Legion Drab and go over everything a second time to get a solid colour down. It doesn't matter if you don't completely cover the shapes you've made, a slightly sketchy approach actually works with the look we're trying to get here and it makes the flagstones look a little more three-dimensional. The more colour variation you can get into the bases, the better. Once that's completely dry, we can start adding highlights and texture to the bases. To start this, we're going to use some thin down Zandri dust. And what we want to do is start building up the colour over the flagstones using a sort of sketchy approach that means in some areas, a little of the Steel Legion drab will still show through. We also want to leave a thin line of the Steel Legion drab around the edge of each flagstone. This is going to help with that sense of the tiles having some depth. We're going to do two thin coats of this, but again, the second coat shouldn't go directly over the first. We want to continue being sketchy and only roughly going over the same shapes each time. And there's no real technique to this, just sort of go with what looks good to your eye. The next step is to add a little Screaming Skull to our Zandri Dust. You want to go with something like a 3 to 1 mix, or if you intend to really gradually build up the highlights over many many layers, add even less Screaming Skull than that. And we're going to do the same with this mix that we did with the Zandri Dust, thinning it down and applying it in a sketchy haphazard fashion. We want to make sure we are leaving areas of every previous layer showing through at certain points. Once again, I'm doing two coats of this, keeping it loose, trying to keep some variance in the coloration. And then I'm going to add a little more Screaming Skull to the mix, and I'm going to do exactly the same thing again. Two thin layers, making sure I am always leaving a little bit of the previous layer showing through. And this is the point I stop with the layering, because I know I have a lot of these bases ahead of me, and I really don't want to make them too labour intensive. If you want to, you can keep on adding Screaming Skull, building up lighter and lighter colours, even working to pure Screaming Skull if you want to. But I'm happy with what I've got here, which means we can leave it to fully dry before the final stage, which is Seraphim Sepia. 
I've tried these bases with Agrax Earthshade and the end result is just a bit too dark. But a really thin coat of Seraphim Sepia over the whole base adds a nice yellowy tinge and it also helps to blend the transitions between the layers of colour. And then that's it, we're all done. Here I've got two finished examples, the one on the right is the one I've been working on through this video, the one on the left shows what the base might look like if you went for more rectangular flagstones and used a base of Dryad Bark instead of Abaddon Black. For me, the black just works better. And of course, if you want to, you can add more detailing. You could apply a few tufts of static grass, some little rocks, or even apply green or brown flock along some of the cracks between the flagstones to simulate moss. I'm not going to be doing any of that, I like the clean, unfussy finish on these. So that's the end of this video. Sorry it's retreading some old ground, but I thought it would be helpful for this to be set aside in its own video that I can reference to in any of my other painting guides. Hopefully, some of you have found it useful. Thank you to all of the Always Bored Never Boring Club members, and thank you everyone for taking some of your valuable time to listen to me today. If you liked the video, please consider pressing the like button. If you really liked the video, please consider subscribing if you don't already do so. And hopefully, I will see you all again very soon. Bye-bye, everyone. Bye-bye.